I guess uh, I think we should just uh, get started because we have uh, quite a few presentations from in the session. Um, so my name is Olav. I'm uh, working here at the HISP Center in the implementation team. I'll just give a very brief introduction here, and then we have a few uh, uh, quite a few presentations we want to uh, do in the next hour. Um, so we will have uh, Severino from Saudi Digitus East Mozambique uh, presenting on their collaboration between the, the university and the HISP uh, team. Um, we have uh, Dr. Palita from uh, Ministry of Health in Sri Lanka who will be presenting on their capacity building approach. We have a virtual presentation from uh, Kenya Ministry of Health, Diane Kamar, Charles Mugambi will be presenting uh, a virtual academy that they've set up in uh, Kenya to build uh, capacity among health workers. And then last but not least, Shurajit will talk about um, some other ways we have, uh, we're supporting the development of core team capacity, the academy program, and also the tools and approaches we have for end user training. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff we want to cover, so I'll uh, just dive straight in. I think uh, when we talk about sort of the HISP approach uh, and the role of capacity strengthening, I think it's sort of embedded and critical part of all the work we do in terms of supporting implementations uh, of DHIS2. I think some of you have maybe seen uh, this uh, rocket we've had on some uh, for some years talking about how uh, this is all sort of related the platform development uh, the capacity strengthening in countries and uh, the action research that we're doing how it sort of all fits together so this is a, a new attempt to try to um, sort of explain this relationship and the idea is that these components of doing the country implementations of DHIS2 building capacity in countries uh, and the platform development, which is sort of guided by uh, the activities in countries, uh, by the local needs that sort of come up when we're working on implementations, as well as, well as the academic research, um, which uh, also informs our implementation approaches and the software development. So this is all sort of three components that are really interlinked. And if you take away one of them, um, it's sort of missing a key component of the whole DHS2 implementation approach. So I'll just talk a little bit about sort of the academic uh, type of capacity building uh, that we're doing as a uh, HISP. So from the beginning, HISP has been an action research project. So action research is about uh, introducing organizational change, um, solving real world problems, and then generating knowledge uh, from those changes. So it's about researchers being involved um, in implementations and building knowledge based on that. Uh, and that's sort of been a founding principle of HISP uh, from the beginning. It started, always been a, a research project. Uh, Concretely, uh, as HISP, we have master programs and a PhD program. So in terms of master programs, we have a quite new thing here at the university, the HISP Center, where we started last year, a new master's program on digital health. So previously we've been part of the information systems research group more generally, but now that we have a dedicated master program on digital health. Um, but we also have collaborations with universities in uh, uh, South Africa, Mozambique, Malawi, Tanzania, Ethiopia, uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, with educating master students in information system topics, enabling them to become uh, the people who support um, implementations in the long run. From the beginning, we also had PhD program which has been central to uh, his from the beginning, especially in the early years. A lot of the actual 
implementation work and the development was, especially the implementation, was actually done by these PhD students. And a lot of them, we have an example, many examples sitting in the room now are uh, now leading and working in these groups after coming through these uh, PhD programs. So I think there were, uh, even in the last, this month, there's been a couple of uh, PhD students that are graduated. So I think there's about 75 students now that have finished and about 20, 25 are currently part of this program. I think key to both the, the master's program and the PhD program is that uh, the type of research we're doing is on information systems. And I think uh, when we're working on DHIS2, uh, to me that this kind of information systems thinking is kind of bridging the gap between all the IT specialists, the sort of very technical expertise and the people with the domain knowledge. So the public health experts, um, the medical experts. So this kind of uh, education is about understanding what does it actually take to implement an information system, uh, maintain it over time, and make it sustainable. Uh, so being able to sort of bridge all the fancy requirements that you have from the health side and all the advanced technical things you could in principle do, but trying to sort of marry that and come up with approaches that are both providing the kind of uh, systems that is needed for the domain expertise, but that is also sort of technically um, sustainable and achievable. So with that, I'll uh, leave the word to Seferino, who will talk about how in Mozambique you're um, organizing your collaboration between the HISP and the university. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my, my name is Efren Saushan. Uh, I'm leading the uh, East Mozambique also Digitals. Um, we are uh, supporting the Lusophone community in the implementation of DHIS2. Uh, our, those are the countries that we are mainly supporting. Uh, we are, most of the team is based in, in Mozambique, but uh, we do have other colleagues that are based in Guinea-Bissau and San Tome. So we'll be sharing a bit uh, the experience that um, or our experience with regard to the capacity building and uh, mainly uh, focusing on the activity that we do in in, 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 in Mozambique. So as uh, Olaf was, uh, was mentioning, the, this process of capacity building, it has several, it's a combination of efforts uh, from the global uh, uh, to the regional country and organization and individual level. In, uh, the global, we are all aligned to all the activities that uh, the university has been um, um, uh, promoting, uh, the, the PhD program, the master programs, well, within the, the, the regions, we also part, we are part of the, the, the big or the hubs where we do also have some training. We participate and also um, the, uh, support or, or facilitate the, the training programs at the regional level. And then we do also do uh, some activities in the countries uh, and also uh, within the Ministry of Health, uh, even uh, doing the building the capacity of the staffs that are um, uh, in our organization, but also those that are supporting the different ministries. And, uh, and then the focus here is going to be mainly what, what kind of the activity that we are, we are doing with regard to uh, specific how are we building the, 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 the capacity of our um, the staff, but also those uh, students that we uh, we they cross our let's say our path during the, uh, the the implementation of DHIS2 in the different countries. So in order to do that, we we, we set up a program uh, uh, which we call an internship program. And then we, we in, in, in this formalization of this internet, internet program is based on the MOU that we are uh, um, we have we have with some university and also we we are 
uh, in the process of negotiating with other universities so that the, the students, they can use, uh, they, or, or they can spend some time with us, um, not only learning about uh, the information system area, but also uh, supporting the, the, the implementation, linking the theoretical part with the practical, uh, or practical part. So at the moment, we do have uh, a relationship with the Eduardo Mundan University, um, and also uh, uh, this you call Union Lukung University, which is based, these are both in Mozambique, which is based on uh, uh, one of the regions where we, do, we are doing some implementations. And uh, apart from that, we do also cover some specific requests from the organization, the ministry, that, uh, to, to develop specific program to build the capacity of the, 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 the staff uh, will relate, as related to the, to the information system, but uh, more focusing more on the, on the DHS2 uh, implementation. So in order to, to materialize that, we do um, create it. Uh, uh, I, I will call a program in Portuguese. We call it Aprenda. Uh, there is a we, we within that program we allow, for example, uh, students to 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 request to do registration to request for uh, specialized uh, internships, both academic or, or uh, pre-professional. And uh, based also during that uh, processes, uh, there is also the linkage with the, with the, with, the, with the universities. So we, we do have within the, 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 the South Digitals one well, research uh, and, and the capacity development unit that is dealing with that, and um, which allows, for example, these students to come and then sit at South Digitals and participate in the implementation of, the, of those, uh, both, uh, I'm sure you remember, uh, Olaf presented here uh, first with regard to, related to the development of the software, there is also research and the, 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 the capacity building. So the students, they are, both, they are supporting the three because when they come, uh, they do their, their registration. Uh, they, we have there where they, 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 they can they have a form where they can apply. When they're applying, they, they, they select which area they want to, to, to be engaged, whether they are, they are, they are doing development, that they are doing developing, they will be uh, attached to the uh, software development unit. If they, are, they would like to do the implementation, for example, we do have, in in, Lukung, uh, in Zambeza province, uh, five students that are participating in the implementation of uh, IMISH, the Education Management Information System. So those ones are linked to the implementation uh, team, and then they all be led by the, 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 impl the implementation, uh, let's say, manager that is, linked, is uh, at, at our organization. So we have been running this program since 2015, and um, currently most of our uh, the staff that, that we have at South Digital, they come through the same program. They, they go through a process where they we, we um, try to um, embed the, the, the East philosophy. So the, during the process of internship, which is the minimum period of time they stay is three months, but they can stay six months or more than that. And then during that process, they have we do have this core core development, core learning, where they 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 they, they understand a bit. Of the DHIS2, they understand the, the, how we are working, the philosophy, and then through that, we, we, uh, and at, at the end of the internship, some of them they go back to the universities because um, in some uh, where we have formal, uh, this process is linked to the curriculum, but the others they, they, they would like to continue, they stay with, with us, and then they are employed as part of the staff. So we are uh, ninety percent of the staff that we have at the moment they came through the same the same program. And um, um, yeah, it has been so far successful with the, for, for at least we, uh, because it's very easy to understand based, based on the, this internship model to, for them to know how we are operating and then what the, the vision that we have and also uh, be able to, to, to sustain uh, the process. So um, the, in summer, uh, what, what I have here is so do the, the, the capacity building is a process, it's a long, a long journey process. So we need, uh, it's not only about Bringing a person to the to the organization, there's a lot of other things that we need to we need to 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 to, to, to be uh, the, the, the people need to be engaged, uh, not only uh, uh, the internship, uh, but also during that internship there is a, there are <coughs> academies, there are training that they need to participate to understand the field. Some some of them they participate on the development to build some of the innovation. They go to the field to understand how things are working. So based on that, they will be learning and then building their capacity and then support 
the, 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 the ministries. For example, in Mozambique, uh, the, the, the team that I mentioned about the image, they support the Ministry of Education. They are, they are students, but they, we are doing a question to them, but they have the, the idea is that they had the hand, maybe they will be supporting uh, within or even working with the Minister of Education. So that's what I, what I have to share uh, for today. Thank you very much. Uh, so I don't know, we have time for one question because Seferino needs to uh, move on to your presentation uh, right after this. So I think we'll save the other questions till then, but if there is one burning question to Seferino, we can... Uh... Uh, my question uh, might not only be to uh, Zeferino, uh, but it's a general observation that I've seen. The issue of um, pre-service curriculum development, uh, especially for the health workers, we know that at the, at the end of the day, there will be managers. And uh, what we have seen in most countries, this aspect of training the health workers to be managers so that they can, is, they can use data in, the, um, in managing or in, or in decision making is a bit lacking. Uh, and uh, even in our uh, presentation here, uh, this aspect is not coming out clear. Uh, I don't know whether it's a deliberate or uh, maybe it's not being done. So I wanted to know uh, what are we doing in terms of pre-service curriculum development for health workers so that they, at the end of the day, before they join the, 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 the service, they are aware of, the, uh, of how they can be using information for decision making. Thank you. And a quick comment. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, I think that, that the whole idea, uh, which is uh, oh, oh, one of the aspects which uh, we did not present here, is um, this with this what we call aprenda is to allow uh, build the capacity of the, the or what you are calling pre-service for the students before they, they get to the to their work. So uh, we will be even receiving. If there is an organization, let's say Minister of Health want them want, to, want us to do the that, that they want to hire a group of people or new talents to, to join the organization, they will be able to, for example, talk to us and then we identify the universities, we train them during a certain period, and then those, for example, those the one that will be let's say the best, they can be um, um, let's say are provided to the organization, to the ministry. To, to be part of the, of the stuff. It's not clear mentioned here, yes, but you, at the moment, for example, we do have, a, uh, we are running a program at the, at the moment in Guinea-Bissau where the Minister of Health uh, asked us to train. We developed uh, 22 modules of, uh, related to DHS2. There are some aspects that are technical, others are not non-technical. So we are uh, doing that training to the group of the 18, from those 18, I think uh, nine or, or 10, they are already in, within the Minister of Health, but the others, they are not well, in, the, in the Minister of Health. They are just been trained and then the head of HMIS just identify them from the university. So you need you to train them. So they will be selecting six to, 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 to join the, 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 the Minister of Health at the end of the day, and then depending on the availability of the resources like that. So I think uh, this is uh, the, the, not clear, but we are aiming to do that kind of uh, uh, curriculum development also uh, build the capacity of this, the staff before they join uh, the, the, the program. We discussed it with, with the, uh, the Wahoo uh, in one of the RVs in Guinea-Bissau during the same, they would like to participate in the developing the content of those so that they, they will, the health worker, they will be able to um, uh, at least do basic, uh, when they join, they will do, do basic uh, operational activity related to uh, health information system. Um, yeah, th thank you. I will be, uh, uh, my colleague Emilio is there. So if there's any question, we will be able, later on, we will be able to answer. He's, he's the one mastermind, he's very shy. He's the one masterminding of this program. So I had to come on his behalf in the front. So thank you. Thank you, thank you.
Okay, thank you. Uh, so next up is Dr. Uh, Palita Parunapema from Ministry of Health, uh, Sri Lanka. We'll be talking about the uh, capacity building. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I'm presenting about the DHSU capacity building progress, challenges and way forward in Sri Lanka. Uh, even though I'm presenting from the Ministry of Health, it's a collaborative work with Sri Lanka and the uh, uh, University of uh, Colombo and the University of... Uh, uh, so it's a, it's a collaborative work and we are presenting our experience. Right. So I touched upon DHS to uh, how it was in, evolved over and progress in Sri Lanka and capacity building stakeholders and challenges. And what we have initiated recently about the DHS to local uh, community of practice and sustain uh, DHS to capacity uh, building program for the future. Uh, so it's a, it's a long journey started uh, way back in uh, 2009 uh, as a part of collaboration with the uh, University of Oslo and the University of Colombo with the uh, master's program. And then gradually uh, with the master's program, uh, students were involved in developing uh, programs and uh, involving uh, small scale implementation. Uh, actually, uh, some advanced implementation started around 2015, Dr. Pamo this year who is behind this, this national implementation of district national nutritional programs. So then there was scaling up of this implementation gradually, uh, uh, reproductive health information systems. And then especially in 2019, the major, major, uh, major uh, with the COVID-19, with the innovative approach, COVID-19 vaccine track and COVID uh, surveillance was developed and deployed, especially deployed in practical sense, national wide <clears throat> that's the important thing and at the same time i must mention some of the implementation uh, were not able to sustain during this period i have given some examples but uh, overall there's a very positive uh, implementation of this now for the implementation of this dh uh, impl uh, systems it is important the very important component is the human resource capacity building now basically uh, early also, you highlight the importance of different pillars. One thing is to maintain the existing systems. You need people. For the new development, you require people to uh, program and implement. And the integration with other, especially when you have multiple health information system, integration purpose we need. Now, Sri Lanka is especially facing a financial downturn or crisis in this. So cost effective. Uh, so software application and the implementations are very important at this stage in our country. Now, uh, during last 10 years, 10 or 12 years, uh, there are important stakeholders of this whole process, starting with University of Oslo and University of Colombo and Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, His Sri Lanka. And the Ministry of Health, because they are there are Ministry of Health is the largest employer basically. Almost all the trained health informaticians are within the health ministry, also say 90%, 85%, and some in the universities. But uh, all these stakeholders are really important in long run. So as you well aware, there are different areas of uh, capacity building, design customization user training, system integration, server management, maintenance and support and advanced development. Again, I mean, these are the areas, but again, uh, if you take the hierarchy, there are top level people and there are, there, there, there are different tiers of tra uh, tra capacity building required for different uh, health workers. Then what are the challenges? Now, during last 10, 12 years, we, we uh, now we have developed a lot of things we have trained a lot of i think uh i suppose 40 50 people uh train on this thing uh, dhs2 
but uh, sustainability of existing capacity building really not linked to the human resource capacity building plan of the Ministry of Health, especially our unit is responsible for, for digital digital innovation. So it's not really linked with this HR capacity plan. That is one uh, out, uh, this is a problem. Then uh, turnover experts and trained staff and turning over, going to other, other organizations sometimes, going to the international area. So it is sometimes difficult to keep those good people. Uh, then uh, gaps in distribution of this uh, these experts within the ministry also, I mean, adequately distributing in different areas also challenge. Sometimes, for example, Family Health Bureau in Travel Sri Lanka looking after the MCH program, they have a very good capacity, but certain other programs are not having the same capacity. Then the sometimes lack of collaboration with the Ministry of Health and PGM in 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 sustaining this effort so so challenge so basically with that uh, last year with his sri lanka ministry of health and with the pgm also we we thought about having a different little bit different approach to this problem having develop a local community of practice uh, getting people uh, organized with this and uh, having more collaboration with the hisp also uh, and then co uh, stronger coordination with PGM. Those are the three pillars which we we were uh, we we, we uh, initiated. Now I'll just talk about local community of practice. Now it's a platform for sharing knowledge and experience on DHS through implementation in different parts of the ministry and uh, even sometimes outside the ministry, led by the Ministry of Health, uh, Health Information Unit, and supported by His Sri Lanka. So now we have a kind of a good uh, uh, collaboration and line of thinking, involving diverse group of including national experts, in implementators, end users, and interested groups, and multiple and also international partners also. And uh, we had conducted few trainings uh, but it's in the initial stage, I would say. Uh, then we are communicating with them. This local, uh, 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 this community of practice, we are uh, having communication with them in different channels. So uh, achievement of local DHS to capacity building, capacity in improvement uh, between different institutions within the ministry, we have a good collaboration and more stable implementation. For example, in, when there's a two in one, one of these, our platforms, there's a more uh, rapid response to those issues. Then uh, enhance interest on DHS2 among health informatics community. So still, uh, these are the way forward. We basically retaining the active participants in the community. Recognizing the contributions of the community of practice to rewarding schemes, some kind of which you, University of Oslo is doing master's program, PhD program. Likewise, we can't do that kind of thing, but even within the ministry, recognition of their services, that is one way. Then updating the our community of practice members, updating their knowledge, and then ensure expert involving DHS to participation in community practice to history Sri Lanka and with the international partners also. Then the most importantly institutionalized within the Ministry of Health, this capacity building program, it should be institutionalized because this is the largest employer of this. I mean, all the, most of the trainers are, I mean, absorbed to the ministry. So this, so we, we need to have some kind of a sustained mechanism and institutionalized mechanism within the Ministry of Health. So uh, then basically our goal is to promote the appropriate use of DHS so within the increasingly complex digital health ecosystem in the country, because we have already developed the digital health architecture blueprint, which link many, the main purpose is the interoperability between the system. So we, we recognize the importance of the integration. So that is one thing. So improving the country capacity to uh, capacity of DHS through multi-sectoral uh, involvement is not possible to do only by the Ministry of Health. So there are multiple partners involved. Then the instance, <coughs> sorry, institutionalize the DHS to related knowledge, skill, and best practices to ensure sustainability of the system. 
in the long run. So basically, uh, thank you very much for your active listening. So. Uh, Thank you. I, th I think we'll uh, save the questions for the end of the session. Uh, so just take note of them if you have uh, questions to this presentation. And we are ready now to give the floor to. Let's see if I can just find this. Uh, so Diane and Charles, are you uh, are you there on Zoom? Yes, I am. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so then I'll uh, give the floor to you to talk about your uh, e-learning uh, virtual academy work. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. So we are going to be presenting this with Charles. So I'll do a bit of the slides and then he will take up the rest of the, of the slides and then we can do the questions together. So I think as a country in Kenya, we have made a lot of progress since the launch of DHS2 up to date. So next slide, please. Can I get the next slide? Oh, yeah. One moment. Yeah, sure. Why I share my screen? Yeah, thank you very much. So we had a pilot of DHS2 in Kenya in one of our counties in 2010. And moved. The, the results from that pilot were very good, and that is why the country was able to scale up in 2011. So we scaled up to have DHS2 as, a, as our reporting system, and it's being used by all programs in terms of uh, collecting their different data elements within the defined data sets, and also the counties are able to report for routine data that they're collecting at facility level. So we have had um, continuous capacity building and technical support to the counties. And we are able to support counties on discussions around building knowledge on implementing the systems and also implementing the systems within the defined system. And we've also been doing a lot of capacity building for the different counties. So we are looking at guys who are actually collecting data and also looking at those who are able to actually upload it into, into the system and those who use the data at the different levels. So we have facility level, we have sub-county and we have county. So for different levels, we have data use and data collection. Next, sorry. Yeah, so we've been doing face-to-face um, -face training for the counties and our different cadres in terms of the health workers. And sometimes we also had to do the virtual conferences. So limitations then turn out to be very pricey. It's very costly to bring the counties to selected areas to be able to train them. Of course, there's also disruption of service delivery during the workshops and therefore they have to make arrangements to see who sits, for, sits in for them at work. And it's quite inflexible for those who want to do in service training and there's limited access sometimes to materials even after the training. So we thought through and decided to come up with a virtual academy. And for the virtual academy, we have two, two approaches. One is synchronous and the other one is asynchronous. And for the synchronous training, it just means that the, you have to have a group of people who log in to take a particular course at the same time. And for synchronous, then you can have everybody just log in and do the self-paced um, learning at their own convenience and at their own time. So the one that has been taken up most is the asynchronous one where we have people logging in at different times and taking up the courses. Next. Yeah, so the virtual academy is really a learning management system that was set up and customized by the Ministry of Health with support from USAID, a health IT project. And we have a team of the, the instructional designers. And when we want to upload the content, we have the subject matter experts 
different stakeholders, and we have the core team from the Division of Health Informatics who are actually in charge of running and implementing the DHS2 system. So we came up with a curriculum and we have different modules on KHIS within the system. So the process is really iterative and involves editing and review of content to some kind of format that can then be uploaded into the system. So we went through that process for hosting and have been able to roll this out to the country and we have different people accessing the systems. Apart from just the DHS2 curriculum, we also have um, other core modules within the system. Next. So for administration of the e-learning courses, looking at KHIS, we have this rolled out at different levels. We have level one, level two, and level three. And this is defined based on the competency framework, which really helps you um, identify your need and it helps you identify your strength and it helps you identify what you really need to build up on. So if you can actually do, if you're competent in level one, you can go ahead to take level three or you can go ahead to take level two. So it is not restricted that you must do level one. For people who are actually managing and implementing the system, they have to do all the levels from level one, level two, and level three. But for those who perhaps log into the system to just look at issues of viewing data and running analytics, level one may not really be necessary because it's just the basics. So we started by having these three levels. We collapsed this into KHS fundamentals, but we still have the three levels defined within the system. And enrollment is open to everyone. There's self-enrollment. You just log in and enroll yourself into the system. We're able, able to monitor the enrollments and we're also able to monitor the completion rates for the, for the different, for the course and for the different levels. So for those who successfully complete the course, we are able to give them um, certificates and we also, they're also able to get CPD points. And this is really um, after having a discussion with the different regulatory bodies, so they can actually pick up and are able to award them the CPD points. So completion rates um, have also was previously low, but have also increased after the implementation of the certification and the CPD points. Charles, you want to go on? Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Maybe you can proceed to, to the next slide. Yes, so um, after a while, sometime uh, implementing the the e-learning mode of training for some time, we saw the results. Initially, uh, training through face-to-face, -face, we are not able to reach most of the people, especially in the remote areas. Um, and uh, I think we were able to train uh, less than uh, the rest than 30 counties across the country. And there was high turnover of the trainees. You train somebody today, they are transferred to another area the next day. So um, the e-learning mode has helped us to reach uh, a wide audience. Uh, currently, we have uh, 2,147 uh, people who have been trained and uh, 459 uh, certificates that have already been issued um, across the country. Um, once we rolled out the, the e-learning mode, we were able to see like uh, even the remote areas of the country, uh, we were able to reach uh, uh, people who were supposed to be trained. Um, the graph shows the completion rates um, uh, from zero to 100. Um, so we have those are between zero to 20 being the highest, but these numbers help us to target. Uh, maybe those who, those who are between 90 to 100, we are able to just motivate them so that they can complete the, the courses. So uh, completion rates still remain low. It's a challenge commonly in e-learning uh, courses, but we appreciate that even for those who have not yet completed, they've kept on coming back again to, to make reference to the materials because they are already available uh, online. So we can move to the next slide, please. 
So uh, we've experienced challenges uh, during this uh, online learning training. And uh, one of the challenges we have is uh, low internet penetration, especially in some remote, remote areas of the country. Uh, we have uh, also low number of low completion rates, low numbers of instructional designers, especially from the start, we really struggled to have people, our team to help us in conversion of the content to e-learning or to a e-learning format that can be uploaded for online learning. Um, and of course, uh, related to that also, um, that the technology from the beginning, at the, at, at the beginning, we, we sometimes didn't have uh, spaces or somewhere to sit down, especially when you are doing recording, you need a certain space, maybe you need to go to, to a studio. So that was lacking, but uh, as, the, as we also keep on learning, we are also learning how to record the cost effectively without the need to, to go to a studio. Yeah, next. So we have recommendations um, that you can take up from my end because uh, from the challenges that we've already seen and some of these we have already started. And number one, we are trying to promote offline access of the content. And uh, this one works well with um, um, Moodle mobile app. We didn't mention that the platform that we are using uh, is open source, which is Moodle. Uh, and therefore, for synchronous learning, we use Big Blue Button, which is also open source. So we are advocating for use of mobile app for Moodle mobile because you can be able to synchronize the content to your mobile phone and access it offline or once you get home, especially because mostly we are targeting uh, corporate people who are already working, the nurses, uh, the HROs and CHROs and all that. So most of them, I know they are able to access internet so they have to work, but when they get home, they may be having challenges. So we are encouraging the use of uh, Moodle Mobile app. Uh, we also we are also training more course managers to uh, provide learner support, and this will help to increase the completion rates. Um, apart from HIS courses, we opened the system to accommodate uh, more programs and departments from the Ministry of Health, and. Uh, Sometimes you find uh, people just, uh, or the course sponsors, they just upload the content and they go, and they don't care to look at the statistics or to support the learners. So this is a challenge that we've seen. Uh, even for HIS courses, we need to keep on supporting the learners and encouraging them to, to complete the courses. Um, and uh, like we've already seen, um, when there is a small incentive, uh, it could be that certification or CPD points. Um, there is that, you'll notice that there is improvement in terms of completion. Initially, when this course was rolled out, we didn't have the CPDs, we didn't have certification, but the moment certificates were issued, we started seeing the completion rates going up. And sometimes also other in incentives could be like provision of uh, data bundles because we have also the content in video format, which is a bit heavy uh, for a number of uh, users. And of course, we also were working towards a continuous capacity building for the health informatics uh, division to be able to keep on updating the content and also to keep on um, updating the content. Next slide, please. So yeah, we have worked jointly um, in collaboration with the USAID Health IT Project. Um, which is based at the University of Nairobi, Department of Computing and Informatics. 
I think that brings next slide. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you. We welcome any, any questions. Um, Hello, one, two. Testing one, two, one, two. Okay, um, uh, thank you for bearing with us. Um, is there any questions for any of the presenters? Um, Thank you very much. My name is Louise Day from London. Um, my, my question is about your modules. Um, it sounded like most of them are in-service training. I wondered if um, any of them have been adopted for pre-service training, particularly for nurse, midwives, medical students, that health worker group. Thanks so much. Diana and Charles, I think that question was for you. Yeah, okay, then, thank, thank you. Thank you. I can start on Diana can add to, to, to my comments. Um, initially, the target was yes, in service, but uh, the courses, especially the ones we brought out online, uh, basically they are open for everyone. So even those, the pre service uh, our students can be able to access them. Recently, we've had uh, discussions with the Kenya Medical Training College on uh, integration with their, they also have an e-learning platform and we are exploring ways on which through which we can be able to cross share the content that we, that is uploaded on the MOH Virtual Academy. Uh, apart from that, we usually have uh, hackathons. These are the different universities. Uh, it's, it's, it's rotational uh, across the uh, number of universities that we work with in Kenya. So University of Nairobi works with a number of universities around the country, which we call proximate, county proximate universities, which are based away from the capital uh, in the county. So we work with the universities and most of the participants in this uh, hackathons are the students. Maybe Diane, you can add something. Yes, yeah, so just to add what, what Charles has said is that we actually focus more on in service. And this is because these are people who have already gone through the main course and therefore are there to just build more skills and have refresher trainings in terms of what they've already done. For example, if you're looking at guys who have done health information management, they should have gone through the, the basic course and are already within service and therefore are upgrading and just having a refresher in terms of the content and service provision. So we are focusing mainly on that in service. Thank you. Um, I have one question um, to Dr. Palita, uh, the Director of Health Information from Sri Lanka. So uh, you mentioned about this local community of practice for DHIS2, and also you mentioned like uh, Sri Lanka has plans to work with other open source solutions, digital public goods and all. So do you see any potential of uh, using this local community of practice for facilitating in, uh, implementation of other of, um, solutions that you have in your blueprint, or is it just only for the DHS2 purposes? It's a very, it's a very good question. Now, as a, as a country, we are adopting uh, many open source solutions, uh, open MRS, uh, DHS2, then uh, open SRP, uh, MOSIP, and uh, so basically we are we need to build the capacity of our health informaticians on all these different platforms. Now, uh, Ministry of Health is, has, is, is, is we need to work with the international partners, collaborators, Hip Sri Lanka, and other 
like this community of practice is mainly for this kind of uh, uh, getting all the collaborators into a single platform. That's the whole idea. So we'll, we have started with the DHS too, but now we are working with the OpenMRS very soon. Hi, uh, my question is for Dr. Palita again. Uh, I just wanted to understand how, um, you know, learnings are um, shared between different institutions within the uh, community of practice, seeing as DHIS2 is one open source solution that's being implemented. But given that there's open MRS and, and MOSIP and so many of them being implemented, how do you hope to also capacity build across sectors and verticals and not just in the health space? Has there, does the NHP cover for this or is there a broader digitization strategy that speaks about this? Especially now uh, within the mini, uh, I'm mainly referring uh, most of this capacity building at the Ministry of Health level, because most of the doctors in, uh, employed by the Ministry of Health. Uh, now, uh, uh, with our uh, uh, with our data health project, which is funded by the Global Fund, we are working. Uh, we are almost completed the human resource development plan for the health information, health uh, health informatics field. Uh, basically, we are working with, uh, for example, Postgraduate Institute, uh, organizations like this. So there are many organizations that work with, build the capacity of this, uh, this uh, open source products are only one, one aspect of this capacity building. There are so many other things which we want to build the capacity among our health implementation because we have a great asset in Sri Lanka because we have a MSc and MD programs on health informatics, I think very few countries have that kind of asset. So we have built upon those things, but we need to specifically build certain capacities among these healthy petitions. Okay, so I think with that, we'll end the session. I'd like to thank our presenters again. I'm Olav, Amelia, and Zeferino, Dr. Palitha, and Diana and Charles online. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time and a uh, big round of applause for our presenters. Um, yeah, there was one presentation we didn't get to, but uh, we'll upload it online and you guys can have a look. It's just on the academies and, and how we kind of, uh, the, more about the HISP learning approach um, on capacity building. Yeah. I don't know, it says like you try to, this says locked. Hey, that's weird. So no, no, just try. Typically, I tend to just plug them back. Yeah, yeah those are to work again. Yeah. <laughs>